Hey guys, Stephanie here. It is absolutely gorgeous out. It's warm and sunny and just a little glimpse of hope that spring is coming. I do plan to grow indoors full time moving forward because there's just some things I want to make sure I always have access to like cilantro and lettuce, but I'm not going to lie. I enjoy outdoor gardening so much more um, just because the abundance and how fast things grow and the variety of things we can grow. I'm going to be doing pumpkins and watermelons, all the winter squashes like butternut squash and acorn squash and all of those things. And those are just things that we can't grow indoors um, that we can only grow outdoors. So super excited. I know it's not time yet. We actually have a couple of months before I can move the towers out, but this beautiful sunny day means I can be barefoot and just out getting some fresh air. So we're gonna go on a food hunt on the property today and just see what's out there, if there's anything we can harvest, and we're gonna harvest some things off the tower and we're gonna make a recipe. That is one of the questions I get quite a bit is how do you eat a lot of this food? And if you're new to gardening, um, that can be a great challenge. You can grow things like endive and bok choys and all these different foods. I get eggplant a lot. A lot of people love the way my eggplant grows, but then tell me they don't know how to use eggplant. So that's one of the skills we have to learn as home gardeners. How do we eat all this food? So let's go on a hunt. Let's do some harvesting. Sun's gonna make the lighting terrible, but that's okay, because we have sun. But what was really cool is that there were hundreds of birds all over the property today, and the kids just kept saying, look outside, Mom, we can hear the birds. They're everywhere. So the wildlife around here is just really enjoying this little hint of spring, just a little reminder of what's coming. And this part of the mountains, we're in the Appalachian Mountains. We are basically in a food forest. So when I was in Florida, I had a permaculture garden and I set up a food forest and that's where you're growing trees and you're doing tiers of things. So you may have fruit tree, um, you'll have the forest line and that we have different zones. You have your fruit trees and then below the fruit trees You could have some bushes and below the bushes, you know things get smaller and smaller and it's a food forest Everything grows wild. You don't have to um, Till the land or anything like that, but you do like a chop and drop mulch method So you're trimming your trees and that is the composting just like the forest essentially if you go out in the forest It's all thick amazing compost and there's ground cover all the time just from the natural things falling Well when we moved here, I am incorporating permaculture concepts into the parts of our home where we do have room to grow food in the soil and it's gonna be more like a permaculture potager so it's sort of a permaculture kitchen garden with raised beds in it uh, the majority of our food will be grown on the towers but I didn't do a food forest here because we actually live in a food forest there are wild blueberries on this property there um, is elderberry we have mulberries raspberries black ra raspberries uh, blackberries I say blackberries um, tons of medicinal herbs grow wild here and just so much food so I can't wait to show you guys in the spring just the abundance that comes popping out and then what we do with it so maybe give you some ideas how to go foraging in your area so let's go check our mushroom logs no there's no mushrooms on this this is our driveway and it's quarter mile through the forest and so I have strategically put the logs on the driveway so that we can see them so you don't miss the food but I also have a section in the back of the property and there were some fruiting a couple of weeks ago so we're gonna go see if we got a new flush of those I also did a bunch of wild food on our driveway as well. So things like fiddle ferns, fiddlehead ferns. Um, so we can eat the fiddleheads. I incorporated strawberries out there actually, just to have as a wild ground cover. Um, so if I ever needed strawberry plants, I could go get them. Uh, we have wild onion or we have wild garlic or uh, ramps up in the property here and I have introduced them on this path as well so just a great way if you've got any kind of 
forest perimeter it, you can plant all sorts of things i've added grocery store type varieties of raspberries and blackberries to our forest line where the wild blackberries already grow just to increase our yields and have a little different variety so that's how we utilize this wild space This part of our property it looks a little beat up right now because we just had snow but these are blueberries kiwi vine and more blueberries and actually honeyberries as well so landscaped in and strawberries and this is sorrel there's some walking egyptian onions so just on the path to our front door this light got knocked over is Food. These are the blueberries already starting to bud. Look at that. And this is a honeyberry. I'm hoping it made it. Yep, it's already starting to bud a little bit. And then that theme continues through here. It looks messy right now, but. This is actually all food. Here is anise hyssop, which is a wonderful herb for teas. It's in the peppermint family. These are all the seeds, so I'm just gonna scatter them. This is service berry, and it's budding. Um, and then over here is where I had my no-dig gardens. They've all been removed. So this is where the raised beds are gonna be in the permaculture protege. So on this side, this is all food. This is apple trees and mulberry trees and aronia berry and blueberries and about 30 different medicinal herbs live in this area. We're putting in a cob oven under the covered part. That's an outdoor kitchen area. There is a cherry tree right here. There's a cherry tree right here just in the middle of the yard. And the reason is I don't plan on having any grass one day. I plan for all of this to be winding paths through an edible landscape. But we're starting slow because I still have children who like to run around and play. So this right here is a pear tree. So I've got the trees established. Back there is a service berry and another cherry tree. So I'm just adding in different fruiting trees. And then this spring, along and it's a mess excuse it the along the side of the house these are all berries service berries honey berries and then I'll be doing the Vigo garden beds throughout this area as well so we'll be growing here um, I'm actually considering doing a couple of towers out here as well for my pumpkins and larger vining things haven't quite decided yet but this area will be used for growing I'm just not going to grow in the soil any longer because it's such a struggle. Fire pit. So scanning from where I said the outdoor kitchen is going to be, this is all food. It's all wild berries. Just tons and tons. This mess is where we used to keep rabbits and where we house baby chickens. That's an old coop that came with the property. We have issues with wildlife around here, so I don't keep them. And then this shed here. So this area here, I'm actually looking at this tree. There's a reishi mushroom. It's an older one, but there's lots of wild mushrooms in this area. And this was the original chicken coop that the previous owners put in. We have predator issues over here, so I can't use that one, and it's just not fun. And then this shed is my vision is someday to have sheep on this property and to have that be a kind of mini barn for sheep and chickens. So that is I'm not ready for that yet, but that's sort of a long term goal that I want to add to this property.
shiitakes. Okay, we got some more shiitakes. They're small, so I'm not gonna eat them yet. I'm using my shoe. But, they're looking good. Nice and healthy. Let's see what else. Okay, so we don't have any mushrooms, which just tells me we need to do mushroom logs this year and get some more varieties growing. Get some more varieties that grow at different times of the year so that we have more food to harvest. So let's go take things off the tower. It is the end of January, so there's not gonna be a lot of food outside, obviously, but we have the towers and I have a recipe I wanna make. I'm gonna make Thai spring rolls. Um, using rice paper because I have a bunch of rice paper that I stocked up on in our pantry that I want to use. So super simple recipe just using the ingredients off the tower plus the rice paper and some seasonings. Let's go harvest. Okay this right here is a cherry tree. It's a companion to my other cherry tree so a pollinator and the deer really like this one. This is the forest is right behind us. They kind of come up this side. Um, but it's totally fine. So they've been clipping off the tops, but what I'm doing is creating very small trees. So some of these trees, the max height, like this one, will get pruned really heavily in the next month. And the max height for this one is maybe two feet taller than me and a canopy. And then some of the fruit trees I'm doing on this property, I'm doing tiny fruit trees. And that's where you cut them like knee height which sounds so crazy uh, and it's a little bit hard to do because it just seems so unnatural but you whack them and i'll link a book in the description below about this you cut them really 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 short and then of course they're going to grow about three feet from that point so they end up being my height and then branch out and i'm doing this with apples and pears and several different tree varieties and the reason is it kind of fits into my whole philosophy on gardening for stuff like working with nature instead of landscaping um, we're just going to grow food on our property wherever we have access to grow food where you would typically landscape using the forest lines as a way to grow food and then keeping things super simple i like to say that i specialize in simple sustainable systems for small spaces and even though we have 13 and a half acres here it's mostly forest and this camera it's a wide lens so it makes the property people always say you talk about it small and it looks so big it's actually pretty small it just looks wider because of the lens but growing food in a manageable way and so a fruit tree if you allow them to turn into big huge fruit trees yes you get a ton of apples but most people can't ever use the amount of apples that they get off a tree like that it's hard to manage pests it's hard to fertilize trees that are that big uh, it's hard to prune them at the end of the season and really maintain them you've got to collect all that rotten fruit and do something with it once it falls off the tree so the small tree idea is kind Kind of like the towers and my whole principle around gardening it's like we want to grow the fruit but i want to grow the amount of fruit we need for our family plus a little extra for the wildlife so that there's enough room for all of us to so that i'm not competing against the wildlife and feeling frustrated if they are consuming some of the things we grow and making it easy to manage so a tree my size you know we could get 50 apples off of that for example which is a lot of apples and then we can cut it down i can easily manage those branches and compost them back into my permaculture landscaping and we just start the whole process over the next year so in the spring i'll make more content on that and i will link the book below that i'm talking about but it's just another way of growing food i'm really trying to create microsystems in permaculture we talk about zones and you should keep the things you use often that you're nibbling on or like your eggs and all of that stuff should be really close to your home so you'll notice you walk out the front door there's food my chickens i moved them up here and even though it's not that great of a site because they're in like a metal cage now instead of a cute coop i've had a lot of cute coops over the years it doesn't matter we're trying to grow food here i can always build a cute coop later if i really care about that but the most important thing was to get food close to our home in an easy way and an easy way to manage and in my 
past experience growing when I was growing in Florida you know I had really I cared about really cute picturesque chicken coops and things like that and at this point that's not my priority my priority yes I want it to look pretty and I'm gonna have lots of flowers in this garden a lot of edible flowers a lot of flowers that we can use for different medicinal purposes and things too but the goal is to grow food in an easy manageable way that's not taking so much time it doesn't take a lot of labor and we can chip away and get a little bit of food every single day as we need it instead of having these huge harvests that come in like off an apple tree that we then have to manage this massive amount of food and this big tree and all the things that come with that so when you walk out our door if you go to the right there's food all the way to the rocks and then that's where the towers live and if you go straight you get to the chickens and just a few steps where you can collect your eggs I also so grow food over by the chickens in raised beds and that's where our outdoor kitchen area our cob oven will be where we can bake bread and pizzas and things and then if you come to the left this area here will be more of the fruit trees um, edible flowers medicinals and the raised beds for the things we can't grow on the towers like garlic onions carrots and things like that and you can grow onions on the tower it's just slow so for bigger harvest of onions I'll be using some raised beds these are also concepts that you can do anywhere even if you live in a neighborhood I have lived in a neighborhood before with HOAs where they don't like you to you know start gardens in your front yard but you can landscape things in and people won't even know it's food so blueberries look like bushes strawberries as a ground cover nobody's gonna even know that's food unless they come up and specifically look at it sorrel is an excellent green to grow in most regions that is food and it grows beautifully and looks great in a landscaping i do lots of herbs that look like bushes there's lots of flowering herbs catnip all of those can be landscaped into your traditional landscaping people don't even know their food and then the towers obviously give us the option that we can grow on a porch we can grow in the indoors i just grow on my driveway i have found that to be the most enjoyable spot for me you can landscape fruit trees in especially if you're doing the tiny trees people don't even know their food until they have fruit on them and then they look gorgeous because they're like dripping they're my height and dripping with fruit it's absolutely incredible so there are options if you want to start growing a little bit more of your own food regardless of where you live you can do that in apartments you can use container gardening there are soil there are gardening bags you can use to grow food uh, the towers obviously are a huge solution for people in small spaces because you can stick them indoors or on a porch they don't take up uh, the towers only take up about three square feet so that's another option as well all right let's go harvest <laughs> Oh, the other thing and the thing with chickens I have had a lot of chickens over the years tons and tons of chickens and what I have learned um, is that you can end up with a lot of chickens and of course we're feeding them organic feed and the best quality feed and that can get really expensive and you end up paying a lot of money to keep chickens for the amount of eggs you get. So I keep my chickens very specifically. For one, they stay, I mentioned before, this coop not so appealing to the eye. Maybe someday I'll get a nice cute one again. But this one is set up to keep my chickens alive, which saves me money. And it's got quarter inch hardware cloth on it because the predators around here are very very aggressive to shift spots for the light so we have a lot of predator problems so this keeps them contained and safe it's good airflow because it's all open they do have a little wooden house in there so when we get we don't drop 
too terribly low here, but when we get in the 20s or below, they will go into the house where they can stay warm and protected. And then I feed them a lot of things that come off the tower, a lot of the scraps that come off the tower. I do a lot of sprouting and they get all my sprout remains and then any food leftovers. So we don't have any food waste, they get those. And I have found with chickens, um, the secret is to treat them just like I treat my tower gardens and my uh, where I'm turning them over and so these are not pets I don't have a relationship with these chickens I have had pet chickens in the past these are a special breed I'll put the name here they are known for being prolific egg producers so they produce a ton of eggs and a lot of times double yolk eggs they are consistently i have five birds is enough for our family and they are consistently laying four eggs a day even throughout the winter right now they've slowed down a couple of times to three a day but because they're just so prolific in their egg laying they don't slow down as much in the winter and then the secret i have found with chickens is to turn them over so in the spring i get these from a a farmer who raises them to sell his pullets. A pullet is a chicken that's about to start laying, so I don't have to raise chicks. We've done all of that. It's super fun. We've incubated the eggs and had all of the fun with those kind of things, but it's about food production and about making my workload as little as possible and the cost of getting our food as little as possible. All the systems in our house, the towers, the permacultures, the permaculture landscaping, the Vigo raised beds, all of that. The purpose is maximum amount of food at the least amount of cost and the least amount of work. And so in the spring, I will order two more chickens and I'll rotate two out. And I do that every year so that my chickens are always really young and at the peak laying. I can get rid of two of the chickens really easily in our area and every area I've lived in and other states when I lived in, I have found, you know, if you put chickens for sale on one of your Facebook groups, um, I know you can't sell animals on Facebook, so we call it chickens up for discussion and you can have a discussion about it. And I usually do get a little bit of money out of them. So the, I pay $20 a bird and I usually sell them for 10. When I rotate out, I get all those eggs in that two year period because I'm rotating them out every two years and I do two at a time. And so it rotates out that are about every two years maybe two and a half. Some of these are two and a half years old at this point. And it just keeps my flock really healthy, really young, really high production. And somebody else takes these birds and is blessed by them because a lot of people around here free range their chickens. That's how I manage our chickens and get an abundance of eggs. Now, the downside to a coop like this is we just had huge rains. And so it's really, the eggs are dirty, the coop is dirty. So I need to get in there and lay some bedding. I try to do that with wood chips to keep it all natural. Um, but also a good thing about a chicken coop like this is I'm composting in the chicken coop. So I'm doing deep bedding and just stacking it up. Um, ideally, and I build up the sides of it. So I'm building a layer of compost at the base of this chicken coop. So when I do need compost or I wanna fertilize some of my raised beds, I can go dig soil right out of the chicken coop, which is great. And I don't have to shovel anything out of this chicken coop because it's breaking down. So I never take anything out and add new things. I'm just adding fresh bedding right on top of what's there.
Okay. I have some new starts I'm gonna put in there. I'm gonna use clips for my turnips. I like to seed my turnips three or so. Three to five per rock roll. Usually three to five outside. It's more like three indoors. And I have some baby cauliflower. Baby cauliflower is a cauliflower that's only gonna produce a softball size head, but it's gonna produce it in 28 days versus like 65 days for a traditional head of cauliflower. So you can get little heads of fruit really quickly, like three would be the equivalent of a full head of cauliflower. So I can grow a full head of cauliflower in 28 days if I grow three of them and then just keep repeating that cycle. So I'm gonna put those in and I have some iceberg lettuce. I really wanna grow some iceberg lettuce and those need their own spot. And I recommend putting those up tall on the tower because Lettuce just does better if it has space and is at the top. I think there's there's a theory that the, the top plants get more nutrients or get the first dibs on the nutrients. And so some of the things towards the bottom can tend to be a little bit smaller. I find that to be true. And I don't know if that's why, that's just the theory. Um, so I save those bottom grow ports for really hardy things that aren't as delicate. Cabbages, kales, all those things grow like weeds on a tower, Swiss chard, they can grow and thrive and get gigantic anywhere. So I'm gonna put my lettuce up top, um, my cauliflower towards the middle, and turnips again will grow pretty abundantly on a tower, so I can put some of those on the bottom. So let's load this up. I added water and nutrients. That is the extent of it. Super simple. The towers come with timers. And there's two plug spots per timer, which is great because I can double things up and just makes it easier to manage. I set them for the number one or an I for indoor and they're ready to go. Okay, so here are the baby cauliflower. Um, we're gonna start these at the top. This is an important food. I really want some cauliflower in our diet. So let's get these in the top. Here is the iceberg lettuce. It's a red and green, I think it's called Pablo. So cute, just incredible. Okay, and then we have the turnip greens I'm gonna put on a clip. And then I have buckwheat. So I'm like, super excited to try growing buckwheat indoors. I know it'll grow outdoors, no problem. So this might end up, um, because it's gonna take a while, fruiting in the spring outside. So this is probably a plant I'm gonna transition. These got all tangled up. Oh my gosh, they're so big. Uh, so I don't know if I might keep one or two indoors just to see for the duration, but ultimately the buckwheat will grow outside. And this is a pink flowering buckwheat and I seeded it four to five. I seeded it five per rock. Well, I just thinned it to four and we'll see. I don't really know. So this is the experimental phase of this one. And then with the clips, the thing with the clip, I like them because they're going to last forever. You won't have to rebuy these. They're not going to break, but 
you can't it's not ideal to do larger plants like peppers and tomatoes and things like that for a couple of reasons um the main one being they do get stable because the roots of those plants get so large that they are stable and it's fine but the root beds of those plants will grow really wide right at the grow port and when you go to take them out you can't get them out so the net pots actually contain the roots right near the tower to a smaller space and then they kind of grow down and then you can pull them out so that's the main reason i've had some peppers and things on clips before and it just meant that i had to kind of cut the roots and then open the tower to get those out so i don't like to do that because i don't always want to have to open my tower to clean it i want to be able to take plants out and put new ones in really quickly but for lettuce and turnips and things like that that aren't going to have such a massive root bed faster turnover foods they're great they're wonderful and for the roots especially because as the root bulbs produce they kind of fall out of the rock wool and they don't get trapped in the net pot so i've had root vegetables grow too close to the net pot and they kind of expand in there and get jammed up this they just fall right out and they kind of dangle out of this And I love turnips for the turnip. This is a red turnip. But I also love turnips for the greens. Turnip greens are one of the healthiest greens on the planet. So everybody likes to see the impressive root bulb. That can take a long time. Not when growing outside. I grow them pretty quick outside. But when growing indoors, it can take a while to get that root to form. I still do it because I love turnips. One of my favorite foods. I love to eat them raw, cooked, all the ways. But I also grow a lot of turnips for the greens and I harvest greens off of these as they're producing their root and you just get all that nutrition from the greens. One of the healthiest greens on the planet. Okay, and when you're growing, when I'm growing on towers, I always think there's no space on here. This isn't enough food. And then just like that, look at all that food and I still have four spots. So, I think I'm gonna do some cilantro in those four spots. Oh, and dill. Yes, for sure, I'm gonna do, I haven't had dill in so long. I don't know, I just kept struggling with it over the summer, it kinda got lost in the mix. And then I ran out of cilantro seeds, so I am really excited to make dill and cilantro top priority. These are two that I don't like to run out of. So let's get these in. Dill does great at the bottom. It's really big. My basil are not ready to go in yet. I talk about how these need to be about two inches away from the rock wool. Sorry, the lighting's gonna be terrible in here. Um, and that's not ready yet. And these have been like jammed up so I can already see there's a little damage. So I'm gonna give these their own little tray and get them back on the grow station. And we have some purple lady bok choys that are ready to go in. I have lots of radish ready to go in. I have lots of lettuce. I have a lot of things ready to go in, which means we need to harvest some food. But look at these radish. They're already producing radish in here, which is great. It speeds up our process. Let me get a couple of these over here in this Baby Greens extension kit. All right, this tower is a flex with a baby greens extension kit and it's way jammed up. I actually need to harvest quite a bit off of this. My stinging nettle's going to flower. I have another one going to flower, so I don't need this one to go to flower. I've got onions and things, just lots of food, lots of greens, but there's only so much I can do in one day. So I'm gonna start, and I have a lot of starts that need to go in. So I'm gonna start with the recipe that I wanna make and, and then 
tomorrow or later today I'll come and do a huge harvest for salad for the week and that'll clear some of this off and give me some, agro, some more grow ports for this radish and things and that's why I'm always saying start your seeds every two weeks because it's forcing me to come out here and make salad a priority. Now for me it's a little bit difficult because I film and document what I do here so I can't just harvest it all right now. I want to document that for you guys and show you how to prep lettuce to keep it crispy and I have an amazing salad dressing recipe I want to share with you guys. So that gets in the way a little bit but starting seeds every two weeks keeps it where you can be turning over food and it kind of forces you. So I am going to be forced in the next day or two to come clear a lot of this food out and turn it into a meal. I actually have so many meals we can make. Um, I can make tabbouleh, I've got tons of parsley, but what I'm gonna harvest today, I have some Napa cabbage. It's been yeah because I started it outside and transitioned it and I have found most of the plants I did that with did not like it so i won't be doing that again in the future it just the things i started in this garage and put right into the tower grew so much faster than the things i transitioned and the things i transitioned are trying to bolt and just aren't growing great so i'm going to pull one of these napa cabbage and this will make an excellent filler for our thai rice paper egg rolls non-egg rolls because there's not egg in them but vegetable rolls do they call them vegetable rolls thai vegetable rolls So decent size, it'll give us some food to add, but you can see it's just opening up and that's not what we want, what we want our Napa cabbage to do and I can tell it's gonna start to flower soon. So we're just gonna take this and then put a lettuce in its spot. Harvesting this Mabuna, it was another one I transitioned. I just don't like the way they've been growing on here. Everything's a little dirty, so I just want to clean it up. Just doing the same thing. It's kind of opening up and not looking great. Uh, this one was on a clip, and this just gives us a nice cabbage. We don't want to waste it, but it's not going to be the traditional Napa cabbage that I typically grow. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this one and eat it. And then we need some fillers for this recipe. So I have some leeks that we're gonna harvest and green beans. I love green beans and egg rolls. Okay, this will give us a nice crunch. I harvested all the peas, so I don't have any peas. I'm going to load up some plants in here. Um, and then we need leeks. I'm going to do a radish in it. And I'm thinking about doing some endive. We'll see. All right, so I have leeks and I harvested off of these and let them regrow over the summer. Uh, a couple of just stayed small, so plenty to add to our recipe. Okay, I decided to harvest the endive. These will cook up really well and give it a nice flavor. And these have just been on there too long. They're starting to look a little meh. I talk about how food gets to its peak and then goes downhill. We are definitely going to start going on the downhill soon with this one. Okay. Now, so we got all this food. Now, what's great about this is this is actually my least attractive food. This is kind of the stuff I wanted to clear out because it just wasn't thriving. Like I mentioned, some of it was outside, transitioned inside, didn't like that. Some of it's just been in here a while. Uh -huh. So even with the clean out harvest, oh my gosh, whatever's in here smells like peanut butter. It's got a little behind on some of these. 
but it doesn't matter because we're about to turn this into an incredible meal that's full of nutrition. It's going straight from the tower where it was just fed nutrients into our kitchen. So we're not gonna lose any of those nutrients. So I just wanna encourage you. So if you have something that isn't looking amazing, doesn't matter, eat it anyway. It's still food, that's just part of gardening. Ah, when we grow in the soil, most things don't look amazing. Yeah, the grocery stores are a lie the way food looks. That's not how real food looks. Now on the towers, it definitely looks a little bit more like that. Um, more so than this. I normally get really pretty food more than I don't, but it is what it is. Well, let's go get this recipe. Let's go harvest that radish. Wonderful size radish. Okay, the rest are really small. So one sad radish. It'll still make Give it, it'll still give us a nice little tang in our recipe. So I've chopped up, I added carrots and I went and got some celery. I forgot about celery. So I've chopped all that up. I'm going to chop the greens up in a minute, just like Julian style, make them slices, but we need to make our dressing. I'm gonna lightly saute all of this, not mushy like I want it al dente cooked I want it kind of crispy still but we want to cook it and I'm going to cook it in the sauce and then we're going to wrap them up and lightly fry them so excited for these we are going to I'll put this recipe below but we're going to use honey ginger this is fermented ginger honey uh, you just take ginger peel it cut it up and then top it off with honey I need to add more honey it actually should be covered but that's what I'm going to use uh, peanut butter, soy sauce, or amino acids are what I use. Um, sesame oil, sriracha, and then some onion powder, garlic powder, and black pepper. All right, so about a tablespoon of honey. Two tablespoons peanut butter. Because this is Thai, we're going with a peanut dressing. Uh, let's see, four tablespoon teaspoons. No, four tablespoons aminos. Obviously not perfect. Um, two teaspoons sesame oil. two teaspoons sriracha and then some powders about um, about a half a teaspoon of each of these that was probably more than a half that's all right spices are good for us this is onion garlic and pepper and these are from sam's club they had some organic ones i just like the jars i actually refill them with uh i refill them with my spices from azure i like azure standards quality better obviously but i do like these jars they're big and they fit in a lot of places okay so that's our dressing nice and thick let me taste it Mm, oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay. That is really tasty. So what I'm going to do is chop up all my greens. We're going to saute them in a little bit of oil. And they're really wet too, so mostly just water. And then at the end, I'm going to top them with my dressing here. And then we are going to get our rice papers wet, roll them up, and then lightly fry them. Check out these beauties. We're gonna to be topping our recipe with this. These are radish sprouts, so they have a little spice to them. I love, love, love fresh sprouts. These are my mung beans soaking, and I have broccoli seeds soaking, and these are some things I try to sprout all the time, and I'm gonna be making some sprout content for you guys, so if you're interested, keep a lookout for that. 
But this is how I prep food. Um, kind of plant-based farm to table. Looks a little bit different than more traditional farm to table type meals. And it's really just finding ways to use what's grown on the tower. So a lot of times I just take things I like from restaurants, like Thai rolls, Thai spring rolls, I guess they're, I don't know what you really call them, and just kind of modify those to use up what I have. And all of this is from the towers except for the carrots. And I grew carrots in my green stock and it, they went really well. I'm gonna try that again in the spring and then also in my Vigo raised beds. And I don't want this dripping and vegetables are gonna put off a lot of water, especially in Napa cabbage. So I'm going to saute this up, but I'm also working to dry it out a little bit. So as it's cooking, I also wanna get, I'm cooking it on high on nine to get some of that water content to burn off. And exciting news, the kitchen, the new stove. If you've been watching my channel, you saw I found a really cool gas stove and it's going to be put in in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna do a kitchen renovation and take you guys along with me. It'll be taking out cabinets, all this microwave and all is gonna go and replacing it with furniture. So I'm super excited about that. Okay, so this put off a lot of water, which is common with Napa cabbage and I soaked them and they were freshly harvested, you know, just minutes ago. So that's a lot of water. So I'm just putting them in here to drain them off a little bit. Um, just so I don't take in the water that's in the pot. So I was going to write, roll them in the rice paper and lightly fry them because we don't have an oven right now. Uh, I do have a little Ninja oven, um, but I was afraid they're just going to be too greasy. So instead, I, and I don't have any traditional egg rolls, and I don't want to eat them raw in rice paper because they're too wet. So I'm going to take these wontons, and we're just going to make little wonton egg rolls. And these I can lightly coat. I can do a light little spray of olive oil on them, and then we can bake them, and then I'll just make this a healthier snack or addition to our meal later there we go i think i like this best just because i know it'll make for great finger food so i just made mini itty bitty egg rolls so that's how i'm gonna roll these up i like that shape that'll make these bite size these have a ton of flavor in them so we don't even need a sauce but you know, you could make like a sweet and sour sauce to dip them in. These would be better with regular size egg roll pep paper, but you know, we only have what we have. And of course, I'm like pushing the limits. Every one I do gets a little bit fuller, but that's still, that's a nice bite. That'll make a nice little addition to dinner tonight. All right, so I'm about to head to the gym. They're almost done. They were a pain to roll that small, but I ended up with lots of them. So that gives us a nice addition to dinner. And let's taste one. They're not quite done. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, they're good in one bite. I don't know, do I? This is hot. Oh yeah, it's really hot. Oh, it's got good flavor. I won't lie, it's kind of stale. Stale? I think it's kind of the part I bit, though. Oh, you mean the paper? Yeah. yeah. I did get some of the veggies, though. Mmm. Super good. They need yeah, like a... 
Yeah, they need a sweet and sour dipping sauce. Yeah. Sweet and sour dipping sauce. So good. Eating off our tower. See you on the next video.